So normally when I have to do something involving the BMV, I really dread it unless it's like renewing registration, you know, which I don't actually have to go to the BMV for. But honestly, getting the title for this trailer really wasn't that bad. I'm going to walk you through how I got the title for this trailer. Uh, I know it's not going to answer everyone's questions about their specific case, but hopefully it helps. And if you want to leave the question in the comments, I'll try to answer it, but you know, I don't really know too much other than what I'll be telling you today. So the first thing I did was I just went straight to the BMV, talked to one of the employees, and I got a packet of all the forms along with instructions on how to apply for the title or apply for the VIN to apply for the title. So I did that, went home, read through all the stuff, and that was really the first step is knowing, figuring out what I need to do uh, to get the VIN for the trailer so I could stamp it in and then I could apply for the title for it. So the first form that I filled out was physical inspection of a vehicle or watercraft. And all that is is you'll have a police officer come out and look at it and they're just going to check and make sure that there's no VIN number on it and there's no evidence that you've ground a VIN number off indicating that it might be a stolen trailer. So they'll, they'll fill that form out. You'll fill out the top part, which is just like your address and stuff. And that takes care of that form. So the next form that I filled out was application for special identification number, vehicle or watercraft. And that one, before I go over how to fill it out, in my specific case, I'm claiming that I built it. Even though uh, I bought it from someone, I just didn't want to have to bother with uh, the seller information and cooperating with the person who sold it to me. I just... I'm pretty sure it's going to be easier if I say that I'm the one that built it. Uh, so I'm saying I'm the one that built it, and the trailer is about 10 years old. So when the cop came and did the inspection, he put uh, it as he listed it as a 2011 model year. So I'm just continuing on with that for the rest of the paperwork. So for this form, you're going to put you know uh, fill out the top, which is just basic stuff, and then reason for requests. You're going to mark privately assembled vehicle or watercraft. There's no VIN, so you'll leave that blank. And then for mine, I copied what the cop put on the physical inspection, which is 2011 make homemade model trailer. And then ask for vehicle or watercraft type. I put trailer again. The length is for watercraft only, so you can leave that blank. Section 3, privately assembled vehicle or watercraft. What it's asking for is the serial numbers off of parts that you've gotten from donate, donated parts. So I think if you're building a, uh, a kit car or something, or a custom car, then you would put the engine serial number on there. Or like a, if you're borrowing a frame from it, you know, that kind of stuff. And then of course sign and date at the bottom. So the next form, trailer ownership affidavit, is pretty straightforward. The top part, personal information again. Trailer information, leave the VIN number blank. Your make model, uh, as I said last time, you're going to mark the trailer was privately assembled using parts on hand. Date of purchase or date of assembly. Again, since I'm saying it's 10 years old, I put uh, July 24, 2011. No purchase price. Estimated value when new. I put $1,000. I don't really know. I'm pretty sure that's pretty cheap for a trailer. But it's homemade. I don't know. They accepted it. So, And then, of course, the signature and date. Collection of payment, this one's really straightforward. Personal information, phone number, they didn't call me, so I don't know what the phone number's for. The fee is $10. It says that on the checklist that you get from the BMV. And then of course you're gonna put your, in your card information. I think you can do a check maybe as well, I'm not sure. And then sign and date like usual. There's two more things you're gonna have to mail in, and that's a picture of the trailer. I made sure to put mine in color, I don't know if it matters and the checklist that they give you at the BMV. One question you have to answer on that checklist, and then uh, I guess they use the checklist as for something. I don't know. It says you have to mail it in, so make sure you put that in there. And then about a week later, the $10 charge showed up in my bank account, and then about a week after that, so about two weeks, I got the reply letter that had the VIN number that I needed to stamp onto the trailer, as well as a form to have the police officer come out and verify that the number on the trailer matched the number on the form. So I took the completed form to the BMV. They asked me what color it was, how much it weighed, and how much I was going to have on it because they needed to know if it should have a 5,000 pound registration or a 9,000. 
Uh, there's probably a size above that. Uh, I don't know what it is. Um, but the heaviest car that I have is 3,300 pounds. And I didn't know how much the trailer weighed, so I went ahead and I just said it was going to be over 5,000. And they charged me like 50 bucks for the title and one year of registration. I think the registration was like $30 a year or something. I'm not sure. But after that, they printed me out a paper plate for the trailer. And in about a week, I had the title for it. And for whatever reason, it took like another week for the metal plate to show up. But otherwise, that's all. Uh, they didn't even, the officers that came out for me didn't look at the lights or anything. I don't think it's really their responsibility. Um, but there wasn't really much of an inspection on the actual trailer to see if it's roadworthy. Uh, I mean, the tires on this trailer are 20 years old. So, anyway, if you found that helpful, let me know. I appreciate the feedback, and I'll see you next time.